Welcome to Taking Off with the Gary Chicago uh, Airport Show. I'm your host, Pastor Marion Johnson. We have a very special guest here today that's going to share with us about so many changes going on at the Gary Chicago International Airport, and there's so many exciting people are behind those changes, and one of those people are here uh, today, and she's going to come and share with us in her own way. want to thank you for taking time out of your, uh, your, your busy schedule, Attorney Regina uh, Cheryl, and tell us the company that you work for, because I wouldn't want to mess up and the title No problem. Of Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm honored to be here, Pastor Johnson. I'm with Fagree Baker Daniels. It's a Midwestern law firm. Uh, we have two main offices in Indianapolis and Minneapolis, so we've sort of maintained a Midwest uh, location and feel. And um, But we have offices all over the world, including Shanghai and Beijing and London. And just this year, we opened up a, a, an office in Silicon Valley. Um, so we're Midwest roots, but uh, branching out into the uh, outer reaches of, of the world. We were talking off camera before we started, and you have so many great accomplishments. For I feel really blessed to be able to sit in um, somebody's presence as uh, one as yourself to know that you have accomplished so much and you're married and, and have children. So just tell us how you started out with this thing. Did you always have an inkling that you would be an attorney uh, when, you were, uh, when you were growing up? But tell us how all this happened and tell us something about your husband and your family. And sure. I, um, actually, I, I grew up, I think I told you, with uh, four brothers. And um, my dad thought, boys were old and girls were just kind of there to have babies and so I decided at 12 that I had to do something that boys did and that was either be a doctor or a lawyer and I decided I'm going to be a lawyer. Um, so I wanted to be a lawyer before I really knew what that meant <laughs> um, and uh, it turns out I liked it so it was a good decision um, and I did also mention to you that I, I married the boy, the first boy I ever loved in kindergarten and lived down the street from me. Uh, we grew up just outside Detroit and uh, we've been married for 26 years, and I have a couple of beautiful daughters, um, 19 and 23 years old. Well, what a <clears throat> what a lovely story! That would make a good movie uh, <laughs> to meet the one that you uh, to marry the one that you uh, met in kindergarten. That's yeah. really something. And yeah. All these years and the educational process, and still hold on with life's ups and downs. That's that's a great thing. Yeah, thank uh, you. So, where did you get your training from? I went to the University of Michigan. Um, in Ann Arbor and I then went to law school actually I graduated in May of 1987 from undergraduate and got married in June of 1987 and we jumped in a car the next year and went out to uh, law school in U University of California at Berkeley my husband and I went out there as newlyweds and uh, actually worked out there for four or five years in a firm in San Francisco and um, then we both wanted to get home to our family. had our daughters out there while we were out in the Bay Area and wanted to get home to our families. We both, both of our families were in the Detroit area. So we came back, uh, got as close as we could to Detroit. My husband wanted to get a Ph.D. in Indiana University, had a great Ph.D. professor that he wanted to work for in analytical chemistry. So we ended up in Bloomington, which was at least back in the Midwest. And, um, and then I worked for a firm in the the Indianapolis area for 10 years and then um, seven years ago I moved to Fagery Baker Daniels which was Baker and Daniels at that time. So your husband's a chemist? He is a chemist at oh, Eli Lilly. That is wonderful mm -hmm. with, a, with a PhD. Mm -hmm. What a great thing. Yeah. I know that we, we met during the process of the P3 uh, when the P3 was organized a public-private partnership uh, uh, project at the Gary Chicago Airport uh, we met there, and your firm uh, was the firm was the chosen to do this particular work. Can you tell us something about your firm and how long has your firm been in existence? And you can give us the name of your firm again. Sure, sure. And if you have an email address or or a website or something, feel free to share that okay, with us. Okay, thank you. Um, it's Fagery Baker Daniels, and we have been around. We're actually celebrating our 150 year anniversary this year. Um, Back in 2012, however, January 1st, we merged with Fagery Benson. Baker and Daniels is the 150-year-old firm, and uh, we merged with uh, Fagery and Benson. So January 1st, 2012, be we became Fagery um, Baker Daniels, and we have 750 lawyers combined 
in 13 offices. Um, I am working on this P3 project with my partner Rich Hill yeah. and he and I have worked on, uh, this is our third one in the last three years, uh, municipal transactions like this. Rich uh, is a great guy, you've, yeah. you've seen him in yeah. action, he's yeah. an excellent lawyer and a really good person and uh, great to work with and um, we, uh, I guess you can look us up on the web at www dot fagre f a e g r e b d dot com. Okay, and you had you you when off camera we were talking about some other projects uh, that you had uh, taken part in and worked on. Can you mention some of those projects and sure and where they were located? Sure. Um, back at the 2011-12, we worked on we both Rich and I and many other partners and uh, associates at my firm, Fagre Baker Daniels, helped the city of Indianapolis sell its water and wastewater assets to Citizens Energy Group in Indianapolis, um, and that was a, a wonderful transaction. Um, you know, as you know, with these municipal deals, there are many different organizations interested. It's not just like a deal between two commercial parties. You know, we have to worry about the public right. and the community and, uh, you know, the city council and the mayors and staff. And um, I really enjoy working on these transactions because there, there are a lot of people who have a lot to say. And I think um, it's important to know that. Uh, I think our experience has taught us that we need to listen to what the community wants from these transactions as well as the parties who have hired us mm -hmm. uh, and the parties who have hired us also want to know what the community wants. Um, so we worked on that transaction and it closed in uh, the fall of 2012 and then right away we started helping a smaller community around Indianapolis uh, called the City of Westfield and they are selling their water and wastewater facilities currently to the same group, Citizens Energy Group, um, which is kind of a unique body it's a public charitable trust so it's not really a company a public company with shareholders and it's not really a governmental body it's kind of a hybrid and so they have um, the ability to get you know public financing and uh, great rates and there's this this duty to the uh, customers of the utilities to to provide water and waste at the the lowest rates possible without having to answer to shareholders. So um, they've been a great partner in each of these transactions. Um, and uh, like I said, it's kind of prepared us for other municipal transactions. Interestingly, at my old firm, before I came to uh, Baker and Daniels, it was then Baker and Daniels, I had worked on the transaction for Mayor Bart Peterson in Indianapolis, where NYSOR sold the water company right. to the city of Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. So at my old firm, I bought the water company, and then when I came to Baker and Daniels, sold it. So that was sort of fun and interesting. So how how was that your experience with that project? How do you see that being um, being a benefit to you and the P3 at the Gary Chicago Airport? But before you answer that, there's two things I want to get out before we before you answer that. First of all. What's, what is a P3? I know, but I want to listen to the audience to understand what a P3 is and what is the difference between a P3 uh, organization and someone just coming in leasing uh, the airport? Mm -hmm. Well, um, the first part of your question, how did that experience help me with, with this experience? And I think just again, just the, the concept of understanding the interplay among all of the different constituents and understanding that there are there's give and take in this transaction it isn't just a commercial transaction it's something that really needs to benefit the community for it to be able to work well it isn't just about money it isn't just about cash it's about really you know the, the what happens after this transaction um, with respect to a p3 it's a public private partnership and it, it really p3 is sort of an umbrella term for many different types of partnerships between a municipality and a private organization. And so here, I think we're going to have a, a little bit of a unique uh, partnership because we have both the city and the airport, uh, so two sort of municipal governmental type entities partnering with probably not just one, but 
more than likely we're going to have more than one private entity that's going to be able to help develop uh, not only the airport but the surrounding real estate owned by the airport and the city of Gary um, and really we're hoping spark development you know that that sort of trickles out from mm -hmm. from that what is your company's role in the in this process what exactly is it that that you guys do uh, what parties do you work with and what is your specified role in the P3 we are legal counsel to the airport board okay. and so um, the airport uh, actually there's another law firm I should mention um, Pat Lip who also represents the city and the airport and is very helpful in this in this transaction um, but what we do uh, we document the process so we started that you know the board and the city came to us and said you know this is what we're looking for we want to bring some people to the table to help us do something in Gary with the airport and the community and so we drafted a request for uh, expressions of interest which was is sort of like feeler that you put out there to say hey is anybody interested in helping us do something in the city of Gary in the airport well, would and you say that would be interested in investing funds to get those things done exactly uh, because we want this is a public um, uh, broadcast and we want people to know exactly what's going on because some will even make the statement that uh, the mayor and the administration is giving the airport away, so I need you to oh. be specific. And oh, right. No, we are deaf. This is not, and we've been very clear about this in the very first paragraph of the every document we, we've sent out. This is not a sale of the airport. This is not a sale of any of the, the, the uh, property in, around, or surrounding the airport. This is a process wherein the city and the airport are getting investors to come in and invest money in the community, in the airport, um, improve the services and operations at the airport, um, improve hopefully the development around the airport and uh, the surrounding area. So it's not a sale of the airport or any of the city's valuable assets. Okay, I need you to kind of straighten that out. So okay. you can be candid with us here. We are. Uh, we want some facts about what's going on, and mm -hmm. we want it for the community. Mm -hmm. And with this being a community broadcast, this helps clears up a lot of uh, those issues. Uh, so when investors come in, those that's willing to put into the project, um, what type of people or companies do you deal with or you per perceive that you will be dealing with in, in the new future, in the, in the, in the future, mm -hmm. okay? And also, um, what's the advantage? to having a P3 over leasing the airport? Um, again, because this is a little bit of a unique um, transaction, if you just lease the airport, you're getting funds for letting somebody use the airport. There's not the opportunity to um, attract more than just a lease payment. I mean, a, a lease payment is going to be a certain amount, a set amount, a certain number of years, and that's it. There's not the excitement of somebody coming in and being able to invest and develop and create something, yeah. you know, build on top of it. A lease is just a lease. You, you lease the assets that are there. Um, so I think that that's part of the, the opportunity and, and what we're hoping appeals to the potential bidders. Um, the types of companies we're dealing with, there's a, a broad spectrum. And so we have financial companies, we have um, some uh, design and build companies, we have some construction companies, we have uh, some just urban planning type companies. And we've also made it clear in the request for proposals, and again, this is somewhat unique, we are willing to look at sort of pieces so you may come in and you may not be able to take over this whole hundred million dollar project or make your hundred million dollar investment but you may have one neat idea that you want to do on a parcel here you know outside the airport and um, the the team that will review a team comprising members of the board of the airport and the ad hoc committee. I don't know if the yeah, ad hoc committee, committee, if the community is familiar with that, but there's mm -hmm. this ad hoc committee that is um, in charge of, of running this process. 
So that this group of uh, team members will review all of these proposals that come in on Monday, and they're due on Monday, and we will read every one and every word, and we'll sort of sort through and say, okay, we may say this one entity or one team comprising separate entities can do the whole job and they win. We may say this team can do the financial part, but we'd like them to partner with this little guy over here who has a really neat idea about something we can do to a school building or a piece of property somewhere. So there'll be some um, selectiveness about it, it, we're looking for pieces. We may find pieces that go together that create, create the whole. Okay, so uh, what you guys do as the ad, ad hoc committee is go through and choose the, the best candidate uh, for the uh, for the work required or financially able to support what we need. Exactly, and it's a pretty rigorous process. Um, I should say that the working group, so there is a, a group of advisors, and I think you're going to have many of them on your show in the future. So AC mm -hmm. Advisory right. is helping with financials. Um, Jay Clark and Associates is consulting, and um, Al Stanley is one of the, uh, he's really heading up the team to kind of keep the ball rolling. Um, and Fagery Baker Daniels is doing the legal work. And um, there's also a whole other uh, group dealing with real estate. Um, but the, the concept is that um, the working group, we advisors, we grunts, we're mm -hmm. not the important people, the, the uh, ad hoc committee and the board members are the important people. We will pour through these documents and summarize for the ad hoc committee um, the responsiveness of each of the proposals that we get. So if you look through this big fat request for proposals, there are many little factors that we're looking for and even bullets. And so when we evaluate each of the proposals, we'll say, okay, let's look at uh, financial wherewithal. That's one of the requirements. You know, does this entity meet all of these requirements? And we'll score them on a scale of 1 to 10. And there are, I think, seven different criteria. And they're all broken out very specifically and very objectively. This is not a process where we're just going to say, oh, we like these guys. We're going to give them the deal. There is an objective process that will be gone through and a number will be assigned to each of the proposers and uh, the, best, the best party or parties will win. Okay, out of, the, all, out of all, the, all the qualifications, what would you say would be the most, uh, three of the most important things in order to um, be the winner, for the lack of a better term, of this? Um, obviously, past experience. Um, there's, as I've already mentioned, it's, it's important that we have somebody that's dealt with municipalities in the past and understands all the different uh, constituents and understands how to work with them. Um, financial capacity is, again, obviously extremely important. We can't some, have somebody come in with great, great ideas and not be able to support those ideas or back them up with, with the funds. Um, and, and I would say, thirdly, one of the, we actually made a separate category for creativity. Um, and again, this goes back to this is a little bit of a unique uh, transaction because we're asking for ideas about how to do something. We're not saying, here's what we want done. Tell us how to do it, or you, know, you do it and pay for it. We're saying, tell us, give us some ideas. So we have a whole separate category for creativity. And we're looking for neat ideas, you know, is there something unique out there that would call attention to the, the city of Gary and make it a, a neat place? So has your company worked on P3s before? And uh, give us a rundown on how successful that was if, if you've already been involved in P3s. Yes. Um, the city of Indianapolis transaction, what's pretty neat, um, I, we consider it a success uh, the, the buyers of the um, water and wastewater assets from the city of Indianapolis expected to generate synergies from the transaction of $40 million a year. So a savings to the customers of the water and wastewater, $40 million a year. And they ended up generating $60 million a year in synergies. Um, at the same time, the city of Indianapolis had a price that it wanted for those assets. And um, it got that price that it wanted for those assets. It was a $1.9 uh, billion dollar transaction. Mm -hmm. And the city uh, reaped $426 million in cash 
to improve infrastructure, you know, help um, improve the sewers and, and do all sorts of things around the city of Indianapolis. So we consider that a great success. Um, the city of Westfield is, it hasn't closed yet. We're in, in the process of negotiating right now and um, it's got great community support. That's another thing that, that I think part of what you're doing here is really mm -hmm. important is letting the community know what's going on and telling them what a great opportunity it is. And I think both the Indianapolis and Westfield transactions, there was a, a lot of effort to let the community know, get their input. Input there, you know, there's websites set up on the the airports has a website for this transaction, so folks can go in and see the documents that are out there and kind of you know see what's going on. Um, so we 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 feel, I mean, frankly, if the transaction closes, it's a success yeah. um, because sometimes transactions start and don't close. So uh, we feel very pleased with with our past track record. Okay, Attorney Cheryl, um, well, thank you again for coming. Uh, before you get out of here, I want to know this also. If there's always unique things about any project, always, and there's some pluses and there's some negatives, and with you being involved with the Gary Chicago Airport now, what did you see as the positives? And then, unfortunately, there's always some negatives. So, what do you see as being a, a easy carry, and what do you see as being a burden about this job? I think, um, I'll start with the negative and we'll end on the positive. Okay, I think the great. negative is something that, that we're going to have to overcome and it's just negative perception. Mm -hmm. I mean, it isn't, uh, it isn't that there isn't a great airport there. There is a great airport there. There is great potential to improve the airport there. There's great potential with the uh, lengthened runway to have more services and, and really improve the services of the airport and um, the surrounding community, but I think there is a perception, and, and we've heard it. I mean, we're not, we're, we have to just say it. You know, people hear Gary and they think, well, I, I just don't, you know, I've heard things about Gary, I don't know if I want to go there. Mm -hmm. So that's a negative, I think, that's going to be tough to overcome, but mm -hmm. we're working on it, and judging from the responses that we've gotten in the last month or two on this project, we're managing to overcome that. We're getting a lot of interest. Um, on the plus side, I think there is just an opportunity for everybody. You know, there's, there are a lot of things that, that can be done in the area. There is a lot of property that can be developed. Um, I think people really see the potential to take something, a basic infrastructure, and improve it incredibly. And I don't know if the proposers feel this way, but I personally feel like I'm really excited about the thought of really creating a spark in this community and, and starting something and, and, you know, really getting something going and bringing it back. Yeah, I was excited about the electricity in the room when we had the 29 uh, responders uh, come in. Uh, what did you think about that? I, I thought that was great, too. I think, um, again, it was just wonderful to see all the interest and uh, uh, know that those, those people are seriously considering and vying for the, for the right to, to help the city and the airport make this a better place. Uh, the responders, the responders, what questions uh, do you get offline about, because we know investors, they make their, their public presentation and then they go around and they make their individual presentations and with you being uh, one of the lawyers uh, involved with this, uh, and a very good lawyer too, along with uh, uh, Rich Hill. What kind of questions you get uh, about the potential to invest in the Gary Chicago Airport? Well, the first thing I'll say is any questions we get from any one of the proposers, we make it public, we, we respond and we make that response public to all the proposers. So no one is behind the scenes getting more information from us than any other. So we okay. want to make sure that this is a, a process where nobody has any advantage over the other person. Um, so the types of things we're getting asked are, um, you know, <laughs> one of the things, can we have more time? The answer is no. We're on a schedule and we're yeah. sticking with it. Right, right. Um, things like, you know, what's going to happen with the, uh, the, um, the current airport. There are some operators, the FBOs at the airport. Um, how much land is available for us to develop, you know, what, where is the land, 
can we see the land, the property? And as, as you know, we did a tour for all of the yeah. respondents that, that came to that meeting. So they were able to look around and see exactly, not every single parcel, but here are the areas that we're looking at. Um, I think that was important to people. Um, just lots of questions, I think, just about the, the, the general real estate and real property and development opportunities and that sort of thing. Yeah, Terrence, we want to thank you for taking time out of your busy, busy schedule sure. and your closing remarks uh, for some lady, that, uh, some young lady that dreams about becoming successful like you. What would you, what, what kind of advice would you give them? My advice would be um, just set your goals and go for it. Uh, you can do anything. Um, doesn't matter if you're a man or woman or Whatever you are, you you can do it. Okay. Thank you once again for coming. You've been Thanks watching and Take me. It Off with the Gary Chicago Airport show. I've been your host, uh, Pastor Marion Johnson, and attorney uh, Rachel Sherrill has been uh, a very special guest. Uh, pray for her and pray for the progress of the P3 as well as the Gary Chicago Airport. I still believe that we have a diamond in the rough. It just needs to be shined. <laughs> Thank you for viewing once again. Thanks. Good job. Thanks. Good thanks. Job.